This is a video for anybody that missed our discussion on layers of the atmosphere. So I'm going to start with uh, this graph that we had. And uh, the graph is just called layers of the atmosphere. And um, <clears throat> we layered it, we, we labeled it in class. Right, so if you look at this graph, the x-axis is temperature. And as you go this way, it gets hotter and hotter, colder and colder. And this is altitude or height. Okay, so we're increasing in altitude as we go up the y-axis. The first layer of the atmosphere is called the troposphere. Troposphere. Okay, that's the layer that you live in. The next layer up is called the stratosphere. Above that is the mesosphere. And above that is the thermosphere. Those are the four layers you need to know. Memorize those in order from lowest to highest, and then you'll be able to go back and forth. So um, T for thermo, for troposphere, sorry, T for tropo, strato, meso, thermo. Okay. So um, make up some kind of a little crazy sentence to help you remember that. All right. So knowing this, let's look at our class note sheet, okay? So your class note sheet looked like this, and I started to fill it out a little bit. So, um, sorry about that. The atmosphere is defined as an envelope of gases around the Earth, so it's a surrounding a, a big surrounding envelope, they call it, of gases around the Earth. We divide it into four layers based on temperature. Now, why I say that is if you look at your graph, every time you have a drastic change in the direction of temperature on this graph, you have a new layer. So we have, um, for the troposphere, at ground level, we've got the temperature line um, moving, getting colder, 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 till you get to the top layer of the troposphere. And then all of a sudden, the temperature changes. And then it starts getting hotter, 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 until you get to the top of the stratosphere. And then it changes, and so on. In fact, that's how scientists decided to uh, put a boundary at each layer. They, they named the different layers, and they... Um, set the boundaries based on those drastic changes in temperature, okay? So the layers are based on differences in temperature, and um, the layers, starting with the closest one to the Earth, troposphere, stratosphere, mesosphere, and then thermosphere, all right? Now, what we did next in our notes was um, we drew a picture, and we're going to use up a lot of this space here. So I'm going to draw, this is the Earth's surface right here, okay? And let's draw the troposphere. So this first layer we're going to call tropo, and this is where most of our weather occurs. Okay, so we're going to draw a cloud and some rain. Um, so this is your layer. This is where we live, okay? Um, the next layer up is a little bit thicker of a layer. It's the stratosphere. And um, the ozone layer is in this layer of our atmosphere. So within the stratosphere is the ozone layer. So I'm just going to kind of draw some dots to represent the ozone layer. And this ozone layer is super important to us 
because it absorbs ultraviolet radiation. Okay, so the ozone layer absorbs UV, um, which is dangerous, harmful. So this is a really good layer for us. Okay, the ozone layer protects us. The stratosphere is a pretty calm layer. There's not a lot of uh, crazy winds going on like there might be in our troposphere. So if you're ever flying and you're at your cruising altitude, you're usually in the bottom part of the stratosphere some, sometime, somewhere, you know. So um, when I've been flying, the captain comes on and says, we're now at a cruising altitude of 33,000 feet. And so you're up in the stratosphere, it's nice and calm, okay? It's a pretty dry layer, there's not much humidity in it. All right, next comes a pretty big layer, the mesosphere. Not much is known about this layer, though. Um, we can't really get rockets to orbit in this layer because it's not far enough out of our um, gravitational... It's not in the right gravitational pull area, so we can't fly rockets around this layer. Um, we can't really have uh, weather balloons going up to this area. So it's really hard for scientists to learn a lot about this layer, but it's very cold. So we'll say the coldest layer. Um, another good thing about this layer, though, is that it burns up meteorites. So in this layer, if there's a meteor flying through the sky, um, the meteor burns up in this layer. Somebody said, how can it burn up if it's so cold? Well, when the meteor's flying from outer space and coming into our atmosphere, it's flying so fast the friction of the air molecules in our atmosphere start to heat up um, as this object is flying so fast. And so it starts to glow red and then it ignites. And so once it gets into our atmosphere, it pretty much just ignites from going so fast and hitting those air molecules so fast. So meteors burn up in this layer. All right. Um, up above that is the thermosphere. And the thermosphere um, extends quite a bit into our atmosphere up. And then there's no real clear-cut boundary where they say space starts. So this is the last layer of our atmosphere. Okay. This layer can be extremely hot, like 2,000 degrees centigrade, Celsius, sorry. So can be extremely hot. Um, this is where the space shuttle flies. And um, satellites fly here too. So let's do this. Satellites and space shuttle flies in this layer. Okay. Now, those are just some facts about the layer. Why is this layer important? There is a layer within this layer called the ionosphere. And I'm just going to kind of draw a layer that I'm going to call the ionosphere. This is a layer of charged particles. So electrons Oops, ionosphere. Sorry, that's not plural. So this is a layer of charged particles, and um, it's a super important layer because without it, we would not have radio waves. So, um, and not, not just any kind of radio waves, but um, AM radio waves. So the ionosphere bounces AM radio waves back to our Earth. Without it, without this layer, we would have no AM radio. And AM radio was one of the, you know, really super important type of radio. Um, it still is today. 
All right, so that's our basic notes. Um, I'm going to go back and talk a little bit about the ozone layer one more time because I want you to see what ozone um, is, what it looks like. Ozone is O3. Okay, it's made up of three oxygens bonded together. You don't have to draw this, but it's just for your background info. It helps to know. O3, we can't breathe this stuff. Okay, what we breathe, our lungs can only take in what's called O2. So we cannot breathe O3. But ozone happens to absorb the harmful um, ultraviolet radiations. So ozone layer protects life, protects all living things from harmful UV rays, and it's found in the stratosphere. Here's another picture for you. This is a picture of the sun where the ultraviolet radiation is coming from, the UV. All right, and um, there's a couple different kinds of UV that are shown in this picture. The dangerous one, the dangerous type of UV that causes really, you know, skin cancer. Uh, UVB, look at what happens when it goes through the ozone layer. So you got all this UV, and then as it goes down through the ozone layer, it gets less and less and less. And so just a little bit of it is striking Earth. All right, so this layer of ozone absorbs the dangerous ultraviolet radiation. Okay? Um, last, I want to talk a little bit more about... Um, this layer, the ionosphere layer. So let's look at the ionosphere, which is within the thermosphere. So this is a layer of charged particles. Um, one cool thing about this layer is that it gives us the auroras. It gives us the northern lights. So if you've ever seen the northern lights, they're amazing. They're also called the aurora borealis. In the southern hemisphere, there also are auroras, all right? Um, so the ionosphere, we said the important thing is that it bounces radio waves back and forth. So um, let's see if I can zoom into a little radio tower. So this is a radio tower right here. And it's sending out all these little yellow signals. That's the AM. So these waves are the AM radio waves bouncing out. Once they get to the ionosphere, they bounce back to Earth. So this yellow area is the ionosphere, and the radio waves are bounced back to Earth. So then you can listen to the radio. So that's the importance of the ionosphere. All right, those are your notes. Uh, study those notes. Make sure you know this graph. Be able to label this graph with the names of the layers and um, be able to draw in things like our ozone layer. They call it the ozonosphere. We don't call it that. So here's your ozone layer. All right. Um, what did we say for this? Weather occurs in this layer, in this layer, in the troposphere. Ozone layer is in the stratosphere, so this is strato. Mesosphere, we don't know much about it, but meteorites burn up in this layer. Okay, meteors burn up. Um, ionosphere is part of the thermosphere, and remember, AM radio waves uh, reflect back to Earth because of this layer. Okay. So, the other thing to know is what happens to the temperature as you go up in altitude in each of these layers. In the troposphere, basically as you go up, you get colder. So this, this graph is showing that as we climb, we're getting colder. 
As you climb here, you're getting warmer. As you climb here, you're getting colder. As you climb here, you're getting warmer. All right, that's enough talking. Bye.